This video continues my series about the various types of regular sound changes that happen over time in language. Last time we considered situations where existing sounds became more or less similar to one another, assimilation and dissimilation. This time it's all about sounds that get added to or deleted from words. When a sound is added to a word, that's called a penthesis. The new phoneme is an epenthetic sound. For instance, you may have heard some English speakers add an epenthetic R to the word sherbet, pronouncing it sherbert. Not all added sounds are the same. Is the additional sound a vowel? That's anaptixis. Sardinian speakers changed rosa to arrosa by adding an anaptictic vowel to the front of the word. Is the added sound a consonant? If so, that's called excrescence. Ancient Greek speakers sometimes pronounce their word esti as estin, adding an excrescent consonant. Not all epenthesis happens in the same place either. If the phoneme is added to the beginning of a word, it's called prothesis. The Sardinian example, a rosa, adds a prothetic a. If the phoneme is added to the end of a word, it's called paragogy. The ancient Greek word estin adds a paragogic n. Elision happens when a sound is removed from a word. The lost phoneme is said to be elided or deleted. The final b sound has been elided from the English word thumb. Compare the b in thimble. Is the phoneme removed from the beginning of a word? That's apheresis. For example, English speakers may shorten about time to bout time. Is the sound removed from the middle of a word? This kind of elision is known as syncope. This Luiseno word, meaning the bears, is pronounced hunwutmi. Speakers syncopate that middle u. Is the phoneme removed from the end of a word? That change gets called apocope. So the word thumb, losing its final b over time, is an example of apocope. So this has been a quick ground level understanding of epenthesis and elision. In the next video I'll pick out a few types of sound changes we haven't seen so far.